If you could just pass me that gouge. Thank you, Alan. So, gouges. Whether it be ordinary work or if it's for wood turning, I know that you like to do a lot of wood turning. Absolutely superb to sharpen these on the credit card. A little bit of the fluid there. Now, you would assume that when you're sharpening that you would be coming down this sort of way and doing this sort yeah, of motion. Yeah, that's how I would do it. Now, if you're going to do that, to me the biggest problem is, is that it's very difficult to know when you're on that edge. Yes. Ideally, you need to be looking up through the bottom of the table. So, what I'm going to do is take this up here a bit. And what I like to do is actually dress that to the stone so because then I can see exactly what the angle is, what I'm doing. Yeah, you're not going to round it over, are you? So the way I sharpen one of these is I'm just purely coming in like that, and in a light circular motion I do that, and as I'm doing that, I just move the gouge around this way. Right. Remembering how quickly this works, I'm going to just come around this side and do it like here. So all I'm doing to sharpen one of those is that. Again, it's just so quick, isn't it? Is that it all is. you need? It's so quick and so easy. That's all you need. Absolutely superb. So on your gouges, you know, uh, so many of the professional wood turners in the UK at the moment are using these already because you can just keep one of these in your smart pocket. pocket. Yes. Although if you are doing wood turning, which what I would suggest is, is that you're the majority of the time you're using the coarse side because you would need what I would suggest is a coarse sharp edge yeah, as like opposed a wire to edge. a sharp yeah. sharp yes. edge yeah. that would probably be too sharp yeah. for wood turning you just knock the edge straight off yeah it disappears so you could do flat skews in just the same way yeah if you just uh, pass that skew to me the beauty again with the skew is especially with the shape there you're just coming in straight look you're, you're straight on there yeah, that so is easy. just yeah. so easy just to do and you can't really get that wrong no so again, on burst size, it's very, very easy to do your skew. No. So again, if you'd just like to pass me the plain blade. If we go back to the power of cut and the way that this removed the carbide, which shows you how quickly these do work. It cuts forward and back. There is nothing to stop you. If you need to, if you need to do a plain blade while you're on site, just come, you can see when the fluid's just beveling out there, so you can see that you're on it. And again, just lightly. See, the beauty of working with diamond, because it cuts so quickly, is that you don't have to do too much to it. So that's just the fine side of the stone. Yeah. So if we've got a little bit of a nick in it, we could turn if, it over and do if, it in the course. If you've got it, first. exactly, that's, that's exactly what you would do. And again, that is a very keen edge. Oh, my planes are like that. I bet. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. So quick and so easy. So that way around for your router bits, your chisels, yeah. your plane blades, even coming down to your, t your utility knives again. I like to put that on the corner and just literally take this. The flatter you're working that, the more of a filleting edge or the finer the edge you're getting to the blade. And again, just take that nice and lightly, nice and slowly, so you can see what you're doing with the blade. It's the lightness of the stroke, isn't it? If you're yeah. using a conventional oil stone, you'd be pressing hard. I don't know why. Sometimes when I watch people sharpening with conventional slip stones or things like that, they seem to whip it through very quick. Mm. They can't see what they're doing. So just nice and light here. And just nice and light here. So you can do all your utility knives on that. Well, that is sharp. Yes. Almost shave with that one. Yep. Even with things like scissors, bevel edge and flat edge, level those off and come down flat on here and just in a light circular motion, you can take this down your scissors, take the, take the back off there and again, they are absolutely superb. So this is a multi-purpose sharpener which will do a little bit of all sorts of things, even coming down to your pruners, again with your bevel edge. Definitely glasses for this one and hold them so and you can see when you're looking down from here when you're on that bevel edge I hope we can get that bob and I'm just going to take it nice and lightly it's how little you have to do that surprises me it is very easy to sharpen with diamond it is even easier to over sharpen right because you just don't appreciate how quickly it's actually cutting. You, can, you can put that edge on mm. flat and just take off the burr and even for a pair of pruners, that is yeah. absolutely superb. The key then is obviously little and often, isn't it? 
Exactly. I totally agree with you. Something yeah. else that is really uh, quite important as far as the credit card stand is concerned <coughs> and for yourselves is if you use any saw blades. So if yes. your saw blades, again, the same as the router bits. You send them away normally, cost a fortune, grind a lot away. You send those away. They grind about 30-40% of the face off. So what I would suggest is, don't know if you can catch this Bob, I'm just going to point out the face that you should really be sharpening. The face that you should be sharpening is this one here. Not that one there. No. That one good. there. That's what we want to sharpen. You sharpen me in the rake angle. So, all we're going to do is, if you can see that coming in here, if I just show you down here for that, you could catch that there, I think, Bob. That is the way that we're coming in to sharpen that. So you can see that you're there totally flat across right. that face. So what I would suggest is put your circular saw blade in a vise. You need to mark up the first tooth. So, and we're going to come in from there. And all I'm going to do it in a very light motion, just two or three very light strokes, is... Is that with a fine grit again? Yeah. I think when you're working with carbide, unless you've really got a messy saw blade. Now, you can see there how quickly I'm beginning to remove the carbide. Yeah. So really, you're working around the saw blade, two or three light strokes all the way around there, and you put the edge back on your saw blade. What I would suggest you should do is probably sharpen it that way around about three times. Right. Then on about the fourth time, I would then send it away to be precision ground yeah, again. Yeah, right, okay. To back so that, it's, teeth that it's really getting it back. <clears throat> yeah. So what I'm trying to say is interim sharpening will actually, again, uh, prolong the life of your saw blades tremendously. Right. Okay. So all in all, we'll do a fair bit with that one. you can see why, and this is certainly very affordable, you can see why that, having a fine and a coarse cut, yeah. whereas other similar sort of products single-sided, three or four different grades, a bit confusing yeah, to people what, me, exactly. what they should have. Yeah, yeah. The good thing is that is really all you need to get into the range so that you get a feel of how diamond works.